Hi, I'm Marguerite with MovedToTacoma.com, and I'm here with my niece and colleague, Karen. Welcome, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. And we're here to talk about a cause that is near and dear to your heart, mm -hmm. very prepared buyers. Yes, preparedness, efficiency, educated buyers. So one of the things I love about you is when you work with clients, you really take the time up front to make sure that you guys have trust, that you mm -hmm. have a connection, and that they are up to speed on the process and what's going on in the market here. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about how it goes with clients when you first meet them? Yeah, so there are a few different situations that usually happen. The first one is someone contacts me like years in advance, which I love. And <laughs> That's they always, so great. <laughs> they always start the conversation with, hey, I think, sorry to bother you. I think yeah. it might be too early. No, it is not too early Never to start too early learning. to talk to your agent. There is so much about this process, as you know, uh, to digest and to take in. And so the quicker you can start, even if it's just Googling real estate process in Washington, you know, the more you, the more time and the more relaxed you are and you're not in your home search to like mm -hmm. really learn what's going to happen and how to be prepared, the better. Well, so Because that prevents the whole problem that's like our nightmare, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a client who hasn't prepared calls and says, I found a house. Ah, so you're trying to yes. talk why this preparation saves you from that experience. Yeah, so there is so much that you have to do ahead of time before you're under contract. And once you're under contract, we're trying to make like quick, important decisions. Yeah. And so you're going to feel more empowered and more calm if you feel like you know what's happening. My worst fear is someone I, I talk to people who have used other realtors or bought in other states before, and the worst thing to me that I hear, other than I can't remember my agent's name, <laughs> uh, is, I don't really know what happened. Wow. Like, I don't remember the process. My agent would just tell me what to do. I don't want to tell you what to do. Like, mm. I want to give you your options. I want you to know the process well enough to, to feel like you can make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and... <sighs> My other fear is buyer remorse. I don't want... I think we all worry about that. Yeah. I, I tell people, and I think I probably stole this from you, uh, <laughs> if I run it into you at the grocery store, right. I don't want to feel like I have to hide or like, oh, yeah. that was a bad decision. I want to be like, how's the house? Great. It's great. That makes me happy. Yeah. So when you have a client come in and maybe maybe they are a couple years out or maybe they're just beginning their search, oh, what, yeah. what is the initial process mm -hmm. like? What needs to happen in that initial interaction with a new mm -hmm. client? So for me, when I meet a new client and they're saying I want to start you know, within the next month, I always set aside 45 minutes to an hour to meet at my office and just go over everything, answer all the questions. And during this process, uh, we also find out if we're a good fit. Mm -hmm. And that, that plays into the trust piece. And sometimes people come in and they're a little untrusting at first, which is right. understandable. Very understandable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but my goal is to really get a sense of the person's expectations, yeah. let them know what my expectations are of the process, uh, and to feel the, the magical warm. Yeah feelings by the end of the conversation. And it's really rewarding to have people, those people who are a little hesitant, I guess is a good word. And mm -hmm. you can see it in their body, you know, when they when they meet up with you. And then by the end of the conversation, it's like, we're all chill, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, people are slightly terrified, but excited. <laughs> so how does that foundation of knowledge, mm -hmm. trust in your realtor mm -hmm. and rapport, and just mm -hmm. like, you're armed with like everything you need to go out into the market. How does mm -hmm. that change? the transaction versus, hey, oh. I don't know you, but I found a house. What is, yeah. how, does, how does that improve the transaction? How does that make a better outcome for the buyer? To me, immensely, because you're not second guessing your decisions mm -hmm. because you feel empowered. You trust the person that you're talking through things with. The other thing is you feel like you can talk things through. Mm. You're not uh, keeping it all inside. Yeah, I've had people, just as an example, I've had people scared to tell me their budget like right away because oh you're gonna show us things at the tippy top of our I don't want to show you anything a dime over what you want to spend because I want to be efficient mm -hmm. and I want you to feel good yeah but things like that like I'm trying to articulate it it's like the transaction can either be like free-flowing because you got to stay flexible and you're making like good decisions and you feel good or it can be like you're just 
you're bumping into every wall, every problem is this huge thing because mm -hmm. you don't have that trust, you don't feel empowered. And it's like fear. I guess fear-based transaction versus like trusting, empowered transaction. Well, and when I think about it, like transactions are often complicated. There's, there's weird mm -hmm. things that do pop up, but the difference in handling challenges when you trust your realtor and mm -hmm. when you know what you're doing versus, oh, we, find this, we found this house, mm -hmm. write it up for us. There's seven other offers. Mm -hmm. We don't have our financing ready yet. Mm -hmm. We don't really even know how financing works. Like, yeah. It's a totally different game. Mm -hmm. And without that education, it's like you don't know what you don't know. And so we call it, I mean, when we were together, we called it like killing dreams, but it's true. <laughs> I hate telling people the truth sometimes because yeah. they do call. I had that recently. Oh, we want this house and we we haven't, you know, we have to list ours first. But, and it was all these pieces. It's like, oh, you don't even know like how impossible this is. And yeah. like, I don't even know you yet. We haven't even had this conversation. Like we haven't built rapport. And I'm about to tell you like, that's actually not possible. Well, and or maybe it even is possible, hmm. but it might not be the best outcome for you. Mm -hmm. And since you didn't do this prep work before you found the dream mm -hmm. house and get that all ready, the dream house comes on and you're not ready to, to get to be there for it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else I haven't asked you about when it comes to prepping for a great transaction and being an educated buyer? I would say, and this is something we've, we've both said in our other videos, the liking your realtor and your lender is a really big deal. Yeah. And people, I think people downplay that all the time. There is nothing wrong with not choosing a realtor just based on the vibe. Absolutely. They might be great at their job, they're just not the right fit for you. Yeah. It makes everything a lot smoother. If you for like, everyone. If you all like each other. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> all right, well thank you for coming on and explaining how to be a prepared buyer. Thanks for having me.